Welcome, everybody. So glad to see you tonight. Let's stand as we're able to sing our gathering. of the earth. 
He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts Christ gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Word of God, Word of Life. Let us read responsibly the psalm. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. Remain thou man of unto deeds, and give them the rain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. The Lord caused these men to blow in the heavens, and the power of the bell Bringing down flesh upon them like dust, and flying birds like the sand of the seas. Let them fall in the midst of the camp, and round about the dwellings. So the people ate, and were well filled. For God gave them what they prayed. Sir, give us this bread always. 
Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Lord. Dear beloved, grace and peace to you from the living one of Christ. Amen. Jesus said to them, Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. We used to travel to Holden Village, a Lutheran camp in eastern Washington State. It's been a while since we've been there, but I know a lot of you have been there. One of the big treats for me at that place always was the way uh, there would be fresh bread coming out of the oven every morning, and they'd line it up in great lines for breakfast. It's always fresh baked, made with lots of love and care, the same recipe, sort of like we do our bread here. People line up in the morning to toast it and put peanut butter or fresh jam on it and then maybe put it in bags and stick it in their backpacks for a hike. Along the, the line at the wait, there's all this camaraderie. People dressed in hiking boots or lounge wear, and we find out where people are heading for the day and chat over this very simple food. How different other gatherings I have attended. Though the food might be very fine, one can be uncomfortable or even miserable and leave emptier than when one arrives. It's hard to eat and be satisfied when you're eating the dry bread of selfishness or anger or loneliness, sometimes even when you're sitting in a crowd. So the people have come looking for Jesus. Remember, he, all, he met his disciples on the water and then instantly arrived where he was going. He's just fed thousands with a few loaves of bread and two little fish. And the people taunt him for a sign. Most were probably poor. Here was a free lunch. The problem is, Jesus says, you've eaten the bread, but you've missed the sign. In John, that gospel, there's always all this misunderstanding. So when Jesus tells Nicodemus he be born again, Nicodemus wonders about going back into his mother's womb. And when he tells the woman at the well that he will give her living water, she thinks she's never going to have to trade out there with her bucket again. Now when he offers bread, people think their bellies will never be empty, that it will be somehow like Moses in the wilderness and man coming, day by day. But Jesus keeps pressing for something more than physical, well-being. He knows their spirits are hungry and impoverished. He wants to offer them something that will last, bread that never gets moldy or dry, spiritual food that stays with them regardless of their life circumstances, so they are never hungry again. Now, in this pandemic hiatus time, as long as it might last, we're regularly getting together with our kids and our nephew Justin. Sometimes we cook, but often we just pick up something to support a nearby restaurant. It doesn't really matter what the food is. It was so terrible being part during the pandemic that it just highlights Jesus' words here. There's a greater hunger that's satisfied when we get together with someone for lunch or dinner. Our hunger for closeness with one another for communion. So it was for Jesus. He spent thousands, but doesn't want them to miss the grace, the grace of the longing to him. Eating is good when we're hungry, but there are hungers that are deeper. The longing to be intimately connected with others, the longing for meaning and wholeness 
and for God. Or as Joel Sittler used to put it, the yearning to be more than we can be when we're alone. This longing that we've experienced this past year can't be satisfied by simply eating or drinking something, or by owning stuff, or by having power over others, or by being selfish in any way. We're very capable of consuming things without enjoying them, without satisfaction. We overeat, we overconsume to fill that hole sometimes. Our selfishness can be our own epidemic, our own pandemic, and it, it's ongoing regardless of how many germs are around us. I used to volunteer with a local organization of pastors who provided worship experiences on Sunday nights for LGBTQ folks in the community who have been rejected in their own communities or were hiding in their own communities and simply wanted to be with people and be themselves there. We would gather with a prayer and maybe a reading of scripture, depending on what denomination we came from. And then we would go around the small group and if people wanted to talk about something, it was a time to talk. And they could talk about family or their day or something they missed, anything really. And then we would share the Eucharist together. One night, a Roman Catholic priest came, came from time to time. He told about this morning, and he told about participating in worship in a large local Roman Catholic parish. A small group of gay men came in and were turned away from communion. This priest was so distressed, he said, they turned away people with the taste of bread on their on their tongues. How would Jesus want that? Or a retired um, pastor friend visited his daughter's church, which was Lutheran, but a sort of a different variety of Lutheran, that will only commune members in good standing. So the pastor can be sure that people are properly prepared and faithful believers, and so they aren't sinning by taking communion. Well, the pastor there knew knew him very well, knew he was a pastor, so, so Fritz went out for a communion with his daughter. He knelt at the railing, and the pastor communed everybody and passed him by. So he just stayed there, thinking to shame him into communing him. The pastor passed him by three times, and then he put everything away, and the cock crowed. We, as church, can have an eating disorder, not just as Lutherans, but everybody. My example is the obvious physical sharing of Holy Communion, but there are other ways that we shape barriers to people. It's always been so it's hard, very hard, sometimes even a little scary to share what we have, to open our doors, to share our bread, to share a place at the table, and especially to share our lives with people who are different from us. Accepting God's graciousness and then passing along. But I would make the claim today that that's exactly what Jesus is talking about in our gospel reading today. He welcomes any who see him and believe. Our softened hearts toward anybody else, whether they are strangers to us, or known to us and on our wrong side, our hospitality is a visible sign of his invisible presence. So today, we share bread together. And for those who are online, we are sharing in spirit with you. And as we do so, we share Jesus' sign, <coughs> food that will never perish. This Food is bread and wine, but also a community gathered here formed around this table, and the community that is beyond us in their homes and, and communing with one another. A community of acceptance, of hospitality, of welcome, of care, and we show that in many, many ways. 
Our stance is not universally shared, and we are constantly reminded of groups in our community, in our country, in the world, who aren't welcome in most places, with whom we still share this grace upon grace because God so loved the world, for whom we would open our hearts, our doors. And Christ is in the midst of us, still working to gather us together, still feeding us bread that's imperishable, still giving us hope, no matter what lies ahead, still giving life. Amen.
You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing. And accompany those who are imprisoned. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Hear us, O God. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. We invite your petitions, both silent and spoken, Ending with, hear us, O God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all who we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus the Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also with you. Let us share with one another a sign.
in the night in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remember us who love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. Yeah. 